Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on Southpaw's Tales from the Bar Stool. As you can see, we have a different backdrop as normal. We are in my dining room. Uh, we have a special guest. We have Stephen Cullen here. Is this, um, is this your dining room? It's her dining room. She allows me to come in. So to my left is Kat and to my right is Stephen. Uh, you might recognize the name. He is the owner of Knucklehead Media Group. He does all of our uh, distribution, post editing, um, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll let him talk about that here in a little bit. Um, Hopefully not too much. Nah, nah. <laughs> there's no just like room it just, no. exactly right. it was it was really just one of those fortuitous things where he messaged me on Facebook. Hey, I'm gonna be in Corpus. Um, mind if I swing by and say hi? I'm like, hey, we're actually gonna be doing a show. Just come on, and that's how it happened. Um, so and the rest is history. Just so we can get through all the uh, the the responsible bullshit early. If you are uh, viewing us on Facebook, make sure that you go to streamyard.com/slash/facebook. Give them permission to see your name. Um, if you are listening to us on any of your other favorite podcasting platforms, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, click the bells, all that other shit you're supposed to do. Um, I'm just going to blast through all that stuff. What's the review to? Like if you're listening on a podcast. Yeah, and leave a review. Go to the podcast app, rate it, leave a review. And, and that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Yeah. Because I didn't know that that was an option. So <laughs> subscribe. Leave a yeah. fucking yeah, review. Yeah, subscribe. Leave yeah, reviews. Yeah, do all that good shit. Why have y'all waited this long to leave a review? So when he said he was coming, I asked him uh, what he liked to drink, and he said IPA. I don't know a lot about IPAs because I generally don't drink them. Um, I've had some I like. I've had a lot I don't like. Um, so I just went and got a random uh, sampler pack. Uh, which go. one are you drinking? I am drinking a. It's a New Belgium. So if you do like IPAs, New Belgium makes a fantastic Voodoo Ranger. So he's got a Voodoo Ranger Juicy. It's IPAs. the Juicy Haze IPA. I, I'm a. Ranger, I think it's a 7%. Um, ABV, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, God. I put it in spot. But it's really good. I like it a lot. <laughs> and you don't have to drink a ton of them. You can just drink like one or two. So, yeah, this is the first time I've ever had the Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA. So, it's uh, brought to you by 7.5%. 7. 7. <laughs> 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 Not so uh, much. She's, what are you drinking, Kat? Uh, well, I haven't started this one yet. So, this is going to be the uh, Dominga Paloma Sour, and I was already drinking the Josh wine that Stephen brought me. So I'm I'm gonna share them. All right. We're gonna see. Let's crack them open really and, and it was baby. it was hilarious. Okay, sorry. We're Let's crack them open and give them a, a <laughs> yeah, an went, honest Dominga little review there. Josh, Josh, meet Dominga. Yeah, there was a little virtual intro. It's a 1985 right. IPA. New Belgium. Oh wow, that smells like grapefruit. So that's good. Damn. Not that's good. Damn, that's good. Good call. Is this? I think this character is wearing like a Cobra Kai jacket too. That's he's got the the plastic <laughs> sunshades with the Kai the jacket. lines like, through it. That look like Cobra Kai. Like it's Cobra Kai. <laughs> oh my gosh! It that's is. on brand for sure. Holy you know what? For crap. for an IPA, this isn't too what fucking year is bad. That from? <laughs> 1985, back when hey, Daniel Larusso was was bitter. Sweet. Yeah, he was upset. <laughs> Maybe that's that's the year after I was born. Do you feel old yet? Because <laughs> you're a fucking baby. Yeah, this is actually really good though. What year? What year were you born? Eighty two. Eighty two. God damn, just turned the big one four zero this year. So uh, while we're going through this and all of our sponsors, make sure that you put in the comments what you're drinking, even if it's just a uh, pussy water. That's what I was drinking on the way here. So. Yeah, that's why I drink a yeah, lot. Also, a lot. Uh, are you gonna do the sponsors Tri there, baby? Triple digits in Texas. Sure. So first of all is like always is five by five brewing company in mission, Texas, battleborn Texas brewed with beers like the 40 millimeter stout for net bombshell and food bar. It's no surprise that this brewery is taking over the Texas market from the Valley to the panhandle. Please ask your grocer restaurant tours or bars to start carrying five by five brewing today. You can get their information at facebook.com forward slash five X five brewing. You can email them at info at five X five brewing, or you can call them nine, five, six, four, four, five, five, four, two, one. She did all that for memory I because I lost I lost our, our sheet <laughs> that we like, usually she reading this from. <laughs> I wasn't. We, yeah. She's read it exactly. so many times that she oh has it memorized. Gosh. So it's That's like 
that I left out George Rice, but I still love you, George. <laughs> All right. All right. Great work. Moving on. It, yeah. So you, you can gonna... also you could also uh Go to their website, right? Is there a plug-in at all? It's uh five x five brewing brewing dot com. Got it. There you go. All right. Cool. Are you gonna do this one, or you want me to do, do it? it? Oh no, because I always. It's do OMOG it. Construction, founded by Marine Vet Seth, Matt Anders, and Seth Knox. Yeah, Seth Knox and Matt Anders. Jesus Christ! And Seth is a friend of mine, and I blinked out. Like, I'm such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but uh, the the long story short, they're just badasses with concrete. If you need anything done from retaining walls to patios, uh, anything that's commercial, industrial, or residential, they got you covered. Uh, you Houston, get a hold Texas of them. Area. Yep. Uh, the greater Houston, Texas area, which includes Great Katy area. and Conroe and Sugarland, Galveston, that whole area. It's, it's, if you're not from Texas, that place is fucking massive. It takes you like an hour to drive through it if traffic is good. Talking about Houston? Yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's traffic stupid. is never it's, good stupid yeah it never is any <laughs> city that has like three loops around the city that you can drive going 80 miles an hour and it still takes you an hour for every single loop yeah, yeah. It's oh yeah I, i'll take the toll it's road crazy. there it's worth every penny the yeah. only good thing about the houston texas area is omog construction that's right <laughs> man that was a great place but you can uh for real if 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 you're a realtor in the area and you need uh, some stuff taken care of, go look them up. Mortgage people, like they're going to square you away. Go to uh, facebook.com slash O-M-O-G-C-O. That's Omako. Uh, Instagram, Omako. Uh, Facebook, everything is pretty much Omako. If, if just look it up. That uh, stands for one Mexican, one Weto. If uh, you don't know what Weto is, that's Spanish slang for white dude. And that's the name of their company. Uh, or or just, you can just do Ocgomo backwards. <laughs> what the I don't know. <laughs> I don't get paid. It is true. She's right. <laughs> it is. It is. It's it is. <laughs> literally backwards. Yeah, let's hold on. Click it back on that. So, yeah, it's <laughs> it's Ak Gomo back. <laughs> and that's what they pay for. Our, we're goddamn professionals. That's right. <laughs> Moving forward, we got a Nathan Einkorn with uh, Be My Neighbor Mortgage. Uh, it's also BMN. They used to be Debt Does Deals, if oh, you're yeah. familiar with them. They have a podcast too. Uh, BMN does? No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Be My Neighbor Mortgage, which is oh, Chris sh- Griffith. Chris Griffith and Nate uh, Nottingham. They, yep. they just yep. launched their podcast. Uh, Great guys. On your way Great home. Guys. On so, home. yeah, they're the guys that Nathan Einkorn is working with now. Um, you can get him, reach him at N Einkorn. That's E I N K O R N at BMN.com. Uh, call him at 720 980 9988. Or uh, Instagram, Colorado Mortgage Broker, Facebook at Nathan Einkorn. Um, but it's the convenience of online brokers, but with a, a professional small town feel. Great guys, especially if you're looking for anything that's VA related, uh, conventional loans, FHA, all that good stuff. They know everything about everything. If they don't, they're not going to steer you wrong. They're going to find you the answer. Vetted so, VA too. They're, they're yeah, and a VA part of the vetted group. VA. So. They, they specialize in knowing about VA loans. If you don't want to be sold and you only want to be um, taken care of, that's where you want to go. For, for sure. sure. For sure. It's Chris, a Chris, yeah, Chris did our loan too. Yeah. yeah. That's how He's we got stud. this beautiful, nice house that He's Stephen awesome. Colon got to finally see. Yep. It is. It is so, yeah, the sold. company on, on the board, they, they did our mortgage. They did your mortgage. So, yeah. Yep. They, so, oh, we're awesome. just a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. And then finally, yeah, skip these guys. Cool. No, no. Um, Actually, this, yeah, I mean, you, now your three minutes begins. <laughs> <laughs> we bring so, it leads to life. That's that's what we do. We help. So, uh, we help with podcasts. So, so yeah, all of our editing and distribution is done by this gentleman right here, Stephen, and his uh, his uh, I almost said family, but I'm pretty sure your your team is your family. But his team over there at uh, Knucklehead Knucklehead Media Group. You can get them at uh, Knucklehead Agency, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Everything is just Knucklehead MG. Um, they've got all your podcasting. Uh, needs from distribution, editing, uh, planning, get you some good metrics, the stuff that they've taught us on uh, on the backside that we had no idea about. Like they break it down to where even retards like me can understand it. So uh, I'll let him talk about it a little bit more. That was not politically correct. Uh, he, he is uh, he's retards like I? I am. He's way smarter than I am. He can do stuff with leather that I can't do. It's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, Knucklehead is real. I mean, without getting into the weeds, uh, I got frustrated uh, as a sales leader started venting some of my frustrations over the course of a podcast and learned through about 40 or 50 of them that uh, people that I was having on liked talking about the things that they had screwed up along the way. And so they, they asked me to start building podcasts for them. So that was actually how we first met was uh, yeah. 
uh, we, we were, uh, we were in a mutual Facebook group, uh, uh, on our Facebook group on Facebook. God damn, that's redundant. And it's like a veteran, but it's, it's, it's veteran veteran entrepreneurs. And you were looking for, for guests for your, your podcast, the, the knucklehead podcast. And you were asking about people that failed. And and I just recently closed down my business for the first time. (laughs) And, but I was also very candid about a lot of my mistakes and, and if it can prevent somebody else from making those same mistakes, I have no problem talking about it. That's the first time we met and and it's kind of just bloomed into a friendship from there. Oh, I'll tell you all his mistakes. Oh, she will. (laughs) She has no problem. That's that's, yeah. That's what wives are there for to remind us. And then, Thoughtfully encouraged. It's right? to Thoughtfully keep you encouraged. grounded and keep you <laughs> honest. That's Thought, the- <laughs> Thoughtfully encouraged. I like yeah. the way that that's worded. Yeah. My wife does that constantly. Yeah. But she's also my, I tighten, my best friend. So I tighten like, his hats down so his head doesn't get too big. There you go. It's, 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 it's constructive <laughs> redirection. There you go. Yeah, we could like sex that up all types. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, um, it's loving encouragement and. You it's feel like me. a jackass, but then you love her at the same time. It's like, yeah. I'm not mad. Like, I'm just disappointed. It's because I love you. It's because oh I love gosh. you that I have to bust your balls. Yeah. That's so right. yeah. uh, just like we do with any of our guests, whether they're here or they're online, uh, we give everybody three minutes to talk about whatever they want to talk about, your business, um, if you got anything new coming up. A book you wrote, a lot book of wrote, Whatever, your courses, about. anything yeah. that you want to like sell. Sure. This is your chance to do it. Besides that, it's 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 off the clock behind the scenes in order to be influenced. Except for the menage cool. a trois you offered earlier, you don't have to sell us on that. We're already in. I'm to in. qualify <laughs> that statement, it's a brand of wine. Wife really likes it. So anyway, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So <laughs> um thanks, man. I appreciate it. So first of all, thanks for, for having me over. It's really cool to uh to be um to be able to meet face to face. It's one of the cool things that I like about podcasts. It's a cool thing that I like about social media, even though that there's a lot of challenges associated with it. So uh, when I say challenges, I mean, it, there's a lot of uh, image um, manipulation that happens, you know, on, on social media, people try to portray one image and then be something completely different whenever they're in person. So that's not the case here, which is great. So I, I appreciate you all having me over. Oh, um, I appreciate see, you coming over. See, yeah. well, and, that's proof y'all were not. <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, hey, what's happening from New Mexico? Um, Adam Bird is that the same Adam Bird Heroes Media Group? You know, I have I no idea. Adam Bird, are you the same ones from Heroes Media Group? I bet it. I bet it is. Um, if it is, cool. What's up, Adam? Um, it's been a while, my friend. I owe you a call. Um, so my uh, <laughs> so my, wife, okay. my wife, like probably three or four years ago, right at the beginning of COVID. So her passion's always just been helping people, uh, working people. So, all right. So her passion has been fitness working on herself and then indirectly helping people make better diet decisions and then increasing the quality of their life, primarily through their kids. Like, so um, she wrote a children's nutrition book uh, four years ago called power up. And the idea was after talking to my, uh, after talking to my uh, oldest son about, about foods, he was like, why don't you make the characters in the book, like the organs inside the body. And then that way they're telling their person what they should eat. So, Anyway, she wrote the book called Power Up. Uh, it's a children's nutrition book. So if you want to learn about food and, um, you know, the effect that food has on your body from an inside out standpoint, it's a pretty cool book. I so. just texted that to Kat right now. Did so don't I forget. Did I mention yeah. I work at a children's hospital? <laughs> no. Oh, that's awesome. So that's I was like, so cool. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, so she, I could totally pass that on to our nutrition group. That would be amazing. Because, you know, I mean, there's, I hate to say it, but South Texas, we have a very high... There's a there's there's diabetes. a fuck ton of fat fucks here. Hey, I'm one of them. I, I can say it. We're allowed to say that. Yeah, well, we're I mean, there was a that super size me documentary. It goes back. I mean, he was kind of embellishing a lot of what's a kind of an obvious point, but it is a it's a, just a dive deep into um what diet decisions lead to, right? So um I worked with a guy a long, long time ago whose dad whose granddad was actually in the food business, and he said, I mean, would you rather sell the table that people eat on, or would you rather sell the food that they put on there 27 times a week? And it's like, well, if you don't control those decisions or understand the impact of, of what that food has on your body, then quite frankly, you're up a Creek. Yeah. So anyway, she, she wrote that book. It's connected to her passion. So uh, you can go to, uh, it's either Jules Cole. I can't remember Jules colon.com or uh, you can go to Amazon and, and type in uh, power up kids book or power up kids book.com. I think 
as, as well as anywhere else. So I'll take my three minutes and, and plug my wife's book because it's pretty cool. Okay, that's love. that's pretty. That's, that's the love. first time. Three seasons, um, thirty plus episodes per season. That's the first time that's ever happened. Good there's job. somebody else yeah. plug somebody else. So yeah, Heck yeah you're man. a first. Yeah, cool. Yeah, first time awesome. for everything. And it is. Hey, it is uh, Heroes Media Group. So let me plug uh, Adam Bird. So Adam Bird's watching this show, and if you're listening uh, right now, um, just over the over a podcast, go to Heroes Media Group. And go find Adam. Adam's was an inspiration after I first got started in business. Um, you know, like I said, 40, 50 episodes before I actually uh, started Knucklehead Media Group and producing podcasts for companies. Adam was doing it back before even people could spell podcasts. So uh, it's the OG right there. <laughs> so, so people know how to spell? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. It's like, dang it. <laughs> Damn it. Again, I'm behind the A ball. Yeah, for sure. So, so how did you come up with the name Knucklehead? Um, so back in 2017, that same guy that I was, uh, working for, um, we didn't really see eye to eye all the time. And I didn't just, dis- I didn't agree with HR on a lot of the decisions. However, um, the way I reacted to that environment kind of put my, my family's, uh, financial stability in jeopardy. And so I reacted in a way that wasn't, wasn't very good. And so I choose that. I just, it was kind of a term of endearment. You know, you're a knucklehead. You make stupid short-term decisions that jeopardize your long-term financial stability. And so I have a that's new what I did. code word. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, it happens. I'm super sized knucklehead. Hey, listen, we all make mistakes. And so, you know, pride is a motherfucker, better. isn't it? Fellow crayon eater is right. What's up, Chris Baker, whoever. <gasps> hey, you Chris are. Baker. Welcome back. Welcome back sir. to Corpus, Chris. Welcome back. Uh, yes. Yeah, he'll be having his welcome back. So Chris Baker was living here. He moved away and he's moved back. There are He's my twin. Yeah. Wow. We are born on the exact same day, exact same year, like everything. Yes. And just happened to me through uh uh they mutual look friends. Almost identical. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> no, we don't, never, we don't look anything alike. But, yeah. <laughs> but it was it's what kind of twin is that? But he's like my birthday twin. Like it's the anti doppelganger twin. It, I don't know sure. what is that. The, it's the no, he's, he's my twin. Common twin. Yeah, twin. He's, he's my twin. Yeah. That's all that matters. Cool man. Fell on Chris. So, so glad to Rainbow. have it back in the Corpus Rain. area. Rain. Yeah, he was a he was a dryhead or is dry uh, whatever the term is. We yeah we. Yeah. Is we was weird about, we're almost like oh, the Ohio it State. Quite rhyme. I'm <laughs> the, to, I'm it's like the, the out, Ohio State. I'm trying to yeah. figure out a rhyme that goes with it, like twin from a different behin. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna think of something. I'm gonna make y'all shirts that say that or something. I don't know. Y'all, y'all help me out. Twinkie from to... another slinky. <laughs> there you go. That's clever. That's super clever. Very cool. So bro from another home. Hey, uh, Chris, uh, we are not gonna be here on Friday, so. No, uh, but we will be. We're going to be gone for like a week right. and a oh, half. Opsec. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's exact. Opsec. Well, Operational security. Can't give away location. We don't tell people yeah. when so we're going to be gone. We're just not going to be home yeah. um, no. for certain no, times during that. Friday. Are y'all Strike editing that from the record. in person? Uh, yes. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Opsec. It's oh just, God. it's a thing. We're going to New there's York. A reason <laughs> that, there's a reason. There's a reason. Here's where we're anytime, going. Anytime we do road trips, like when you go camping or stuff like that, there's a reason I don't post any of the pictures until we get we, back. We, is so people don't know that we're gone. We share sexual positions. We nice. can't share that's where fine. we're going on vacation. I'm going to exit from that. Yeah, come on out. Conversation. Come on out, Chris. See us tomorrow. Six zero seven. Jay will be here. I'll be at work tomorrow, but. So. I was an 04. So I'm going to bro out with Chris for a second. What's up, man? You were an 04? I was an 04. Don't hold it against me. I oh, was, wait. Never mind. I'm thinking 04 is an officer 04. No, not... no, 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 no. 04. I like 0481. It's Marine. We, that's the first two of your four digit MOS uh, military occupational, especially for those of you who are listening. We geek out on acronyms. We're kind of yeah, awesome yeah. that way. You know how it works. So, these, these little knuckleheads. Oh, the parents have joined. That's that's her parents. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They they, they watch us and until they, we can make Mr. them uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> What is, what is 04 in 04 is logistics? I was a logistician, so uh-huh. I moved stuff, a bunch of stuff. Like so, most of the time, for fun, we would just have all the newbies, you know, empty out the, the Kwanzaa huts and then just move it out. Oh, okay, inspect it. That eh, looks good, put it back. So, that type of 04 is what we did. So, so that kind of leads into something like uh, knucklehead decisions of, yeah. of, of our life. Like, I wasn't a horrible troop, but I was not a stellar troop. Like I was, I did my job when I was in uniform, did you my did job. You did the bare minimum, and which is not like you now. No, it's I mean, I did, I did more opposite. than the bare minimum, but I didn't really? go way above the bare minimum. Like, uh, 
now but I got in trouble one time and and luckily at this point in my career there was a good um I had a good supervisor that that believed that paperwork is like a very last resort yeah. you don't go to paperwork and there's uh, and towards the end of my career paperwork was the first thing that people went through like article you weren't a part of the squadron and so you got an article 15 at, at, towards the end but i had one guy when i made i can't remember what i did but it was something knucklehead and i had to sit out in front of the squadron where they had this rock garden and flip all the rocks so they didn't get sunburned and that was my punishment so i'm sitting out there for eight hours just flipping rocks did any of them get sunburned no, because oh, they're fucking rocks. You did your job. <laughs> well done. Well done. No, did you learn your lesson? Probably of course not. not. <laughs> uh, Mom, just to catch you up, um, oh, I was pre gaming with red wine and then JD gave me a beer. So tink. I learned it from watching you, Mom. I learned it from watching <laughs> you. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, all right. So turning things back real quick to the children's nutrition. Uh, thing just for a second, then we'll go back to knucklehead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, it's your show, so I'm, I apologize. Hey, man, just, so here we go. No, no, take so, over. It's um, fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, the the I'd say the the application, um, at the tail end of the power up book that you know, so how did Jules want to like actually? Tr Jules is my wife, by the way, Jules Colon. Um, Jules Colon on Instagram, knucklehead or not knucklehead, I'm sorry. Uh, power up kids book on Instagram too, if you want to go there. So um, she wanted to say for the kids who actually read the book, how can they share all of their findings or their learnings and, and then apply it. And uh, it's been really cool to see a bunch of kids like, you know, talk about Heather Hart and you know, all the characters in the book, you know, Brenda brain or Bonnie bone or That's Max cute. muscle or That's cute. so I like the alliteration. Anyway, yeah. I'm a big fan of alliteration. Yeah, man. She's, she, and she's a genius. She's, she's a genius. So she's awesome when it comes to like making things super simple. Yeah. Uh, for me, I have a tendency to complicate them. She's like, no, nope, we're going to keep it super simple. And so anyway, she makes things very easy for parents who are getting frustrated about how to, like, how do you get your kids to eat broccoli or how do you get them to choose to try different foods because they like don't like the texture and that type yeah. of thing. So. Or artist, uh, autistic kids that do it by color. It's a, like or a texture. Or textures that throw them off. That that would be know. a good, interesting book for her to do. You know, you know how uh, sure. how we got our kids There's to try different things? And oh, I bet. The, the way that we got our kids to try different things yeah. and, and eat vegetables and mm -hmm. fruits is... We didn't give them a fucking choice. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds true. oddly familiar. Yeah, sure. I just like, resorted to yelling. And she we, was like, no, let's make a we don't run. yeah. And I and this is coming from like we were both like severely overweight. I mean, I was in my oh, I was over two hundred for my entire twenties and into and most of my thirties. So I wasn't the best as far as being a good example, but I expected them to be better. So I would eat crap and then i would be just buying them fruits and vegetables so now they love fruits and vegetables which is great my mom and dad texted me their drink and i what see is that a bottle of a1 no it's not a bottle of a1 <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i see oh no, actually it was an old-fashioned because i see bitters i see sugar i see zest and icy whiskey, it, but whiskey. honestly, it uh, it uh it didn't matter if we were eating healthy or we were eating <laughs> junk food. It was just whatever we had, whatever we made, yeah. they were eating that. Yep. And then, but we also like to go and just randomly try different restaurants, like especially like stuff that's not a chain restaurant. Like, hey, I've never seen that place. Let's yeah, go there. We, we've gone to, and like, so Greek they've just gotten used. So so it's just been a part of their lifestyle. And so if you raise them like that and you don't different. feed into the shit for the first two or three years of their life that they're getting off of the boob and, and soft foods and they're, yeah. you know, don't buy into the shit and just be like, Hey, try it. You might like it, you know, at least just try a little bit. And then after that, yeah. And, and that's I, love, worked. I love cooking. And of course since I switched jobs and I became a workaholic. Like I wasn't before. Uh, I don't cook as often as I used to, but I like to, I have very specific recipes I yeah. tried to modify. She, she yeah. doesn't that follow recipes. That was a terrible. Okay, I don't have recipes. I come up with them my damn self, but it's my recipe. It's in my brain. There you but go. anytime I tried to change it and modify it to something a little healthier, and the kids were like, eh. And I was like, <laughs> crap. It's not like they were bad. I was sure. no, no, the crust. cauliflower was pizza crust was. Stuff. 
fucking horrible. No, yeah, that, that was, was not good. horrendous. I tried to make my own bread. And <laughs> I'm not a baker. I'm a cook. I'm not a baker. I understand. So yeah. I tried to make bread, and it was real bad. Speaking muffins, of, okay, I made keto muffins. I'm gonna, oh, no. hey, I'm gonna jump back imagine. onto the knucklehead thing, yeah, and with what um our niece Casey just brought up says, uh, just be careful with the knives. I'm gonna let Cat <laughs> talk you. about her knucklehead experience. You. So, I, uh, what was the care? What was the careful? I oh. stabbed myself once. Oh, wow. I have street wow. cred now because I've been stabbed. So it doesn't count if you stab yourself. Uh, I'm down with the crips and the bloods now <laughs> because I have a stab. I'm just saying. So, so why don't you tell everybody how I you got the stab wound? I was making a new recipe that I eventually had to remake it because that did not work out because then there was blood all over the onions and everything. The white anyway. onions became red onions. So there um, you go. I was making a Asian dish. Yeah. So I, you know, was dicing things oh, they had to everything. Burn. Did you get the onion in? There? It was it was the same one. I cut the onion in garlic, mm. cut up garlic, cut Gosh. up bell peppers, have it all in there, and I was trying to break up onion salt onion salt so i'm trying to break it up with a knife and it is not working mm. and i get pissed and i go damn it and i it skipped off the corner of it and went an inch and a half into my hand oh, and so when man. i pulled it i just by instinct pulled it out which i know better i'm a medical professional i've worked in a trauma unit yeah i ah pulled it out and i went to the sink <laughs> and i'm like babe and he's like yeah and i'm like I stab myself. I so I was taking. I, I vividly. He does this. He does this. <sighs> I vividly remember I it. I was taking. I was. I was like. like I was. I was like almost out the out the front door. The front door was open. I had a bag of trash. I was taking it outside of the outside can, and I I did not think it was severe. I thought she was just being. Because I wasn't acting I was like, hysterical. What? I was like, I cut myself, and he's like, I can't. I'm like, whatever. And I go in there and I show and he's like, I got to see it. So I looked it up. He goes, oh, shit. <laughs> he goes, I need to see the other side and make sure it didn't go through. So I went like this. He's like, I can't tell. We got to go to the emergency room. <laughs> oh, my there God. There was so there was much blood. So much all over the kitchen. Oh. It ruined our meal. My sister, God bless her, lived two blocks away. So I had to call her like, can you watch my kids? I'm going to the emergency room. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in the emergency room holding my hand like this as someone's like, <laughs> Miss Barbara, uh, with her tiny cough, goes back first. I'm like, I have a wound. <laughs> let's go. Let's get it. Oh like that doesn't. But it was like, okay. So, so for everybody that's listening to the podcast and not watching it, um, she stabbed herself in the meat, the fat part of the meat, right between yeah. her thumb and her pointer finger. Yeah. Good. So, like, so like do myself a favor, and, oh, or do, do yourself a favor, and and yeah, oh, pinch. Yeah. It went here. Pinch that meat right between your thumb and your first so finger. I basically There's a pressure point right there. Severed the mm. yeah. nerves. Now imagine taking a knife there. Yeah. I severed mm -mm. the nerves for my first mm. two fingers on my left hand, um, mm. and twi and ripped through the muscles and everything. It took months to so gain. To be able to do that. Full, I had to go through physical therapy and stuff. So yeah, I have full mobility, but I will tell you this: I've learned the hard way. I can't hold a 44 ounce drink in this hand and trust it because sometimes my hand just lets go. Sure. I don't know what happened, but ever since then, if I'm holding a drink, I'll just randomly drop it. Two things you don't do anymore that and try to break onion salt with knives. No, I've caught her doing it again. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> wow. I'm like, put the goddamn knife down. And believe it or not, step away. The knife has Slowly. salt on it. That burned like a mother. I bet it did. So, right. yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, Cassie. That was uh, that was cool. That was interesting. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, oh, it's boy. it was it's yeah. fine. Yeah, and we were worried though. It was I bet like it was. two months later, and I still couldn't grip. I couldn't I move my too. fingers. So How I was, your I was son? scared. Uh, we had we had we didn't, two, we had at two at the time. Yeah, yeah we had our old. So, so this were was four and six. Oh, that's even. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, young, yeah. Young. I was still working in the oil fields at the time, so oh, yeah. I was gone a couple days later, and she was having to. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah, yeah that was uh, around. She was probably breaking the... onion salt when you were around. So. <laughs> you know what? It was around the time. Why don't you do it like the rest of us? You put the lid back on and you just beat it against the fucking Did counter. You, hear me? you just beat it off really? and then it comes That's, out that is around the time i got pregnant with nolan so maybe i was just pregnant and didn't know it yet okay no that's not true no that's by the time he was i got pregnant i could i could move my hands yeah hey i got full dexterity i, I can do the stranger on jd <laughs> i was like did you see what your dad said no it's that's sad we learned funny. the life-threatening accidents on your podcast <laughs>
They know this story. I've made her tell it time and time yeah. and time again. Do they know about this? Is this the first time they've told this? Oh, wow. If now I would be really surprised if this is how they're going to be conversation at Christmas time. <laughs> no. so. Actually, yeah, we're going to see them in a few days. <laughs> not tell anybody. Um, so, mom and dad, we have to decide Crips or Bloods. I was thinking Bloods because I look really good in red, but I'll leave it up to you all. Do you know that uh, you know the dude Stevo from Jackass? Yes. You know he has he has a tattoo right here, and it's hands with uh, one has a, a red bandana and one has a blue bandana, and they're. Uh, they're holding pinkies like this, and it's Crips on one end and Bloods on the other. <laughs> and he's like, this he is the tattoo that, that's going to get me killed. I was about to say, he hasn't gotten killed yet. Yeah. Was that a, sure, sure. Did he lose a bet? It's Steve-O. Uh, like, I mean, that's right. He has never... his own face on his back. So. He's an interesting dude. Mm. Interesting, interesting dude. I'm so sorry. I thought I thought y'all knew. I yeah, thought they knew, was, too. Everybody. Was, wow. As many times yeah. have I, as, Alfred, as I've made her tell her the story. Like Alfred's comment too. That's funny. Keto, keto muffins. Keto muffins. Uh, so for those of you who are listening, it's cool. They, they, uh, they're able to interact uh, with the audience to do a live stream of the show. So yeah. you know, that's our favorite. I hate when we have to do pre-recorded because I prefer the interaction, the interaction. Yeah. It's just, it's like having a conversation. Like we've always thought of, of the bar stool is the great equalizer, yeah. which is where part of the name of the, the podcast comes from. Because sure. how many bars have you been to where there's a guy in a suit next to a guy in cutoff shorts and they can talk to each other yeah. like they've known each other their entire lives yep. and, and just shooting the shit and there's no agenda. There's no, it's just an organic conversation. And that's kind of what the bar stool has. So we're going to have the live audience when we're not pre recording. Yeah. Like that's and that's why we don't ask people about their business. We meet someone at a bar. You don't ask about stuff like that. No, you want to know who they are. About yeah. A bunch of other things. It's totally understandable. <laughs> so it's interesting <laughs> you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> well, I have I have street cred now because I was stabbed. So <laughs> so go ahead and vote. <laughs> everybody uh, vote. Let's yeah, see we're gonna vote. Wins. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna everybody on this podcast vote Crips or Bloods and let us know and whichever one. What? We add a third one. And we'll, say we'll wear the bandanas Crips, one Crips, show. We'll totally own it. Like I'm in. So y'all go ahead and vote. I don't know if we're gonna go that far because I. Oh heck. No. Okay. Yeah, we will. We can wear we a will. bandana on our show. <laughs> Oh, so I thought you were everybody talk about vote Crips there or Blood I because I got no. stabbed. I have yeah. a stab wound. I have street yeah, cred, and now I can join a gang. Tell me which gang <laughs> I should join. <laughs> Mexican Mafia. You tell oh. me. Oh, oh so we already got one yeah, one Alfred's vote for Blood. Says blood. Right. So, so you said you wanted to. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Chris says blue. Okay. <laughs> what do you, what color do you get when you mix them together? Purple. purple. There you go. <laughs> which is uh, <laughs> that, that's a uh, Latin Kings, isn't it? Is it? I guess. I is know, it? No. I watch a lot of those gang shows no. on like History Latin Channel. Latin Kings and, are not purple. They're purple and gold. Are they really? Are they really? I didn't even know. Oh, I totally inadvertently Googling voted for that. that. I'm uh, live on the show. <laughs> I'm. Go- oh gosh, my phone already thinks real bad about it. I'm Latin Kings. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, no, I'm gonna Before we went off the key. tracks like we always yeah. do, you started to say something. Do you remember where you wanted to go? Uh, it, it was, it was it, just about uh, podcasts. I like the medium uh, mm. because you, you had made the reference of being on a bar stool. Everybody, like, it's like going and watching the UFC. I don't know how many UFC fans you have in here, but like every time, and it's, it's phenomenal seeing what those men and women do when they fight. It's the preparation that goes into it, everybody what stops what they're doing. It's like watching a car accident. You don't want to be in it, but you're, you watch it. It's just like, that's the most powerful thing about a podcast is you get to be that third wheel while two people are having an interaction and you get to listen. So from an audience perspective, it's you always like hear it. public speaking yeah. without the public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to a certain extent. And it's yeah. black and gold for the Latin Kings. So suck it. There you go. Casey says, combine them into the cruds. The cruds, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. the blips or something. The blips. The blips. Looks, I, I mean, like the blips. If you're being official here, it looks like there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of votes for the Crips there. See uh, the, the blips. blue or the blue. Your color, parents so. say the banditos. Yeah. Oh well, crap! They just threw something else in that's there. That's red and gold. So yeah, that would be red and gold. So that's that's too. That's a motorcycle club. Isn't it? it is. Yeah, sure, yeah. It's a motorcycle gang. Yeah. So the well, dominant club of Texas. Cool. I still like the blips. Yeah, that's that's. I like the good. cruds. <laughs> oh, oh, see, you see, there's already a fight with this. You have created two artificial <laughs> just, just games. Say those words out loud. Like, <laughs> no, no. Until I said it out loud, the words That's "I funny. like the cruds" did not make sense. <laughs> just, just say you <laughs> misspoke, and it's like it was a Pixar movie. The and then as soon as, as soon as I said that out loud, I'm just like, 
Mm-hmm. I'm a respiratory therapist. I dealt with the cruds. I'm good. <laughs> that sounds like a respiratory disorder right there. Yeah, the man, the cruds. In fact, that's what we call it every season where everybody starts getting sick. So we're like, oh, the cruds hit. So let's make sure that the. Uh, oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? Statute of limitations has passed. Uh, what's your favorite uh, knucklehead story of stupid shit you've done? Oh, gosh. Um, we're calling you out. Knucklehead, like not business related. Yo, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Like just you being a knucklehead. Oh, my you, gosh. Yes. I will. Just your dumb ass. So go back in uniform right, days. Statute of limitations does go way, way back. This is even prior to the uniform days. Oh, nice. So this is uh, so middle of nowhere, Nebraska. So shout out to my Midwest folks. Adam, you know what I'm saying? Um, there there was a uh, like this. You know, those um, or y'all, y'all are probably into this, like the haunted hay rack rides. Y- y'all ever been or, one of those? Things? OK, cool. All right. So <laughs> haunted hay rack ride south of where I grew up. Um, couple of buddies of mine we thought it would be a brilliant idea to stop by a grocery store and get um i think we ended up getting like four dozen eggs and we hit ourselves uh, so we parked about a quarter mile away from where we actually staged so we parked turned the lights off had the uh, can, uh, vehicle rel- you know relatively concealed went uh you know strategically placed ourselves on this old railroad track and we heard the haunted hay rack ride coming around and what we did is we decided to just egg the ever living bejesus out of the people, poor people that were on that uh, haunted hay rack ride. So that was the start of a series of knucklehead things that, that the next like half hour, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour led to uh, starting with us running away and forgetting there was a barbed wire fence, but oh, where oh, we yes. staged the vehicle and where that was. So we lost two people and then we ended up, you know, lost two people, meaning they like flipped over the, barbed wire fence and we had cut up <laughs> cut up legs it was awful we were 16 17 years old just freaking goofball just doing 15 time. 16 years and old. then when we pulled away i drove through a ditch because there was a car that came like off the paved road down the little gravel road and we thought it was chasing us and so like we, for some reason we we decided to like jump a curb and it was in a Jeep that didn't get like the back door was not completely shut. And so one of my buddies almost fell out the back. Like it was the epitome of stupid. So um, on an unrelated anyway. note, if you or someone you love was injured on a hay ride in Nebraska, <laughs> <laughs> about around 25 years ago, about 25 years ago, around so, the year yeah. 2000, please yeah. call this number. Location remains un, <laughs> undisclosed, but and it's, Midwest somewhere. It's so Midwest funny because there's no statute of limitation for egging. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like I was, I was we a, ruined a lot of Halloween's that day. I was, I was a oh, shithead okay. growing up. I hate you yeah. because Halloween is our jam. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going. Like I was a shithead growing up. Like as a teenager, like I was. Did you ruin people's Halloween? Not their Halloween's, but I ruined a lot of people's lives. Whatever. <laughs> lives. <laughs> Yes. Dot, dot, yeah. Dot. I ruined like, their everything. I made a lot of bad decisions that inadvertently affected other people's lives, yeah. whether I wanted to or not. You're preaching. Yep. Um, yeah. Some, or even on purpose, where I just made bad decisions that I thought were funny at the time. But yeah. uh, it's funny that you bring up the Halloween thing and and the, the shit bag stuff that you were doing yep. because, like, uh, a couple of years ago, my mom was was the one giving away the candy at the end of our Halloween haunt after the, everybody oh. walked through. And she's like, oh, JD, gosh, there's been yeah. these kids. They walked through like eight or nine times. I'm like, well, are they getting Same kids? Yeah. And I'm like, well, are they getting candy every time? And she's like, no. I'm like, there are a lot worse things that they could be doing on Halloween on a Friday night True. as high school kids mm-hmm. than walking through our haunt over and over and over again. And if actually, they want to walk through here 20 times, by God, let them do it because have candy. they could be out vandalizing. Let they could be getting over. high. They can be getting yeah. drunk yeah, and driving. Sure. They yeah. could be doing a lot of things. So I'd much rather them yeah. just circle our haunt over and over and over again. And, and a couple sure. of them actually asked if they could uh, hide in the haunt and scare people. Yeah, I'm That's like, cool. by all means, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a couple cool. local Because it keeps people from them. being the same shithead that I was. Yeah. yeah. I like understand. those guys that were getting high in our haunt and we had to escort oh, yeah. them out because there was kids right behind them. Oh, and it's like, no, don't be no. fucking disrespectful. Yeah, last year there was there was a group of four kids and they were walking through our haunt and I could smell I'm like, man, that's some good shit. Like, they weren't smoking the shit that you and I smoked when we were in high school. Sure. I don't know if you admitted to it in, on yeah. maps, but I did, so I can talk about it. He did, uh, yeah. Trash. He did and my buddies did. I did it, so, mom but, and dad. You can yeah. even ask him. The first time I smoked weed is because of this fuckhead. This fuckhead. So you're welcome. I never but, smoked weed in high school. Boom. Uh, but they walked all the way through, and then at the very end, I could I walked out 
of the haunt and then i can see them in front of our neighbor's house next door uh to the sideway that goes to their door yeah. or the sidewalk that goes to their door and i'm walk up and one of them's getting ready to take a hit of their joint and i rip it out of his mouth i throw it on the ground and i just rub my foot back and forth on it. i make sure that they're not gonna be able to salvage any of this weed because <laughs> i am pissed i am fucking pissed and when i grab it and throw it on the ground all four of them boys vote up on me like they were gonna do something. do something and i just went into straight instinct mode and i fucking knife hand oh wow <laughs> like and I knife hand and i'm like look here fuck stick yeah, <laughs> like just straight up old scum oh, and i'm like i don't give a fuck what you do you can smoke weed i don't give a shit but there's a lot of people in that haunt right now that have worked their ass off to build it to put it together to their their money for costumes yeah um there is a state trooper that's one of our actors in there she, yes. so you're fucking lucky so that I he's not or it. she's not a I followed them. I turned the corner to shoot and, her. And, but, as soon as I, but as soon as I knife handed, like, they all just kind of shelled up a little like, bit. Yeah. He's really mad. And, yeah. and then uh, I ended up staying up most of the night because I, I assumed I that they would come back and, and sure. retaliate, but yeah. they didn't. But it was like, like, I don't give a shit, man. Smoke weed if you want to smoke weed, but there yeah. are people in strollers. Do it in your freaking you know, backyard. There's, there's... Do it in your mom's basement. We don't care. Uh, two comments yeah. from Dana Woodson. One. When I talked about not smoking weed in high school, they called me an overachiever, <laughs> which is amazing. Oh, <laughs> Number two, uh, but the band but the banditos are local shop local. Hilarious, very hilarious. So if you are just tuning in, make sure you put in the comments whether Cat should join the Bloods, Crips, or now as a ride in the banditos, and we're gonna tally it up to see who yeah. she joins at the end of the night. That's true. So we got we got a couple. So. So the, I think the point that you were making, which is fun, you know, to to talk about, it, I mean, everything, all the mistakes that you make, like when you go back and you look at them, it, they're only funny, like with enough time. In, in hindsight. Yes. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because yeah. uh, in the, like in the moment, you imagine how terrified those kids were, regardless, because they didn't retaliate, because in the moment they were terrified. Yeah. You know, they, and then looking back on it, that's probably one of the, those, um, what do they call it? Like those defining moments for them where they actually decided to make a change because you did the hard, the hard thing, which was correct. Somebody was doing something wrong. Well, I, can, I was just pissed I at the disrespect because it was like, because literally like October 1st, I have an entire building facade in front of the house and you can't even see our house from the street on October 1st. Wow. And then after that, literally every waking moment I have that is daylight, I'm out there working on it. Like it's, and then when other people come and help, there's the combination of myself and everybody that helps. It's literally thousands of man hours in October that go into putting this together for one night of people to walk through it. For the, yeah. And it pisses me off when it, it, yeah. when somebody just the, the blatant disrespect yeah, to, sure. to not just ruin it for us, but to ruin it for other people around them yeah, because there's people that were pushing. The yeah, there's little stuff. kids. There's people with yeah. with strollers. There's um, we have, the we have a lot of autistic uh, kid that comes through every single year, and he's a grow. He's grown. He's probably what in his he's 20s? grown, but but mentally he's never gotten oh, yeah, past never. like eleven or twelve years old. And and anything, and it's awesome watching that guy because he, he, just lights he up holds his mom's hand and his sister's hand, and he walks through every year, even though he's like his sensory issues with them is so prevalent. So mm. it's good for him. Which for is actually uh, every year. we're actually making a big change this year in the way we do our haunt because of him and a few others is uh, we are ordering, you know, those uh, paper wristbands that you get when you go to a club yeah, yeah, or you go yeah. to a concert or something yeah. like that. Um, we're going to get those for, um, and they're going to have our QR code so that everybody can put, put their pictures on our Facebook and Instagram and stuff oh, like that. That's cool. But that's we're going to have, um, the glow in the dark bracelets for children under a certain age or for people with sensory issues. And that's going to be um, our scare actors cue like, Hey, don't scare the shit out of this person because they're, yeah. so we're going to tell and, them, but that's also going to be, the ghouls, and, and just so they're going to hold it up away. and they're going to be in front of them with this. And it's a magic yeah. bracelet that keeps the scare people away. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a and so we're going to tell go. our actors to even cower when they see when it they see that. Yes. so that we're even gonna for separate those them, people like if there is a group that has little littles that are going to have the bracelets on let the other people go ahead count to 15 and then let them through so that they're, so they're not scared when we're scaring the people in front of them so it gives them a little bit of a how gap. many years have y'all been doing this this is as, this is cool 
So your brother passed away when? Uh, oh, well, you know, even when 10, he was alive. So ten years so ago. So when, he, well, when his brother yeah. was alive, yeah. he created a haunted house in his backyard, and that's how it started. Wow. So, so combined with some of some of these props, this is like their fifteenth or fourteenth or fifteenth year. Yeah. He's right. Bracelet idea is amazing. And then, yeah, look, dad, dad's dropping pearls of wisdom here, cat. So oh, sorry yeah. to interrupt. You. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so there are two or or three life-changing decisions in your life the problem is you don't know which one they are until later so treat each decision as if it was one of them that is so gosh darn true man so like true. i really really and you know what really pisses me off about how stupid i how thick i was like thick-headed with a lot of the decisions i made that being a knucklehead. was uh knuckle-headed yeah. yeah it was i was so fortunate that i had people around me that were trying to steer me the right direction and a lot of people don't and it, it, and i was lucky and, and even with those people trying to steer me in the right direction i still made so many stupid 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 Thank selfish you. immature decisions like yeah. way yeah, beyond what what is like i if it was if stupid decisions was, was golf i would have had like 18 under par you know like it, I was, I understand what you mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your problem that. is you're hard headed. My problem is I'm a high functioning anxiety person. <laughs> like I thrive on, I hate to say chaos, but at, over, being overwhelmed. So if I'm not overwhelmed, I, I think I almost create that for myself in, in some degree or another. Like I almost have to have the anxiety. And now my job gives me plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Ever Hopefully since you yeah. categorize that, like, my, like keep my, it there, like keep it at the office. My keep home life office. has been so great since it's she's been true. stressed at work. It's true. We've been way happier since I've been stressed like, at work. You've never been happier <laughs> when she leaves to go to work. You're like, oh, no, yeah. No, it's a uh, yeah. I it's almost like I need it. It's weird, and and it took me a long time to realize that it's almost. It, I, it's probably an addiction, and there's probably which is why well, I was right. Casey <laughs> brings up adrenaline. Maybe you're addicted to dopamine. You have a dopamine addiction. Maybe and, 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 and the know, adrenaline. Some people skydive. Some people, you know, they get their thrill seekers for the same, you know, adrenaline rush. Maybe it's the same thing for me. It's the anxiety and the stress that releases, you know, something and, and maybe that's it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, so, it, there's, there is something to that. I remember talking to not just combat veterans, but just veterans just going and having conversations. And I used to think that, you know, talk therapy was just something, you know, hokey. It was, there's really nothing to it at all, but your nervous system stores up those reactions and, you know, talking with people who are specialists in that area who can actually help you uh, work through that stuff it's it's kind of amazing the difference between what you perceive to be a threat and or a, like a self-limiting belief way back in the day uh, and then when you actually go back and work through that you know much to your dad's point about it being a potentially one of those two or three things that were life-changing um you know it's it's amazing the freedom that you feel whenever you're done with that yeah. my, my stepdad was a but, you know, a jackass, you know, looking back, <laughs> looking back, looking back on it, you know, back in the day, he, he left my brothers and I with some really, you know, with some really tough things to have to overcome as we got older. Um, but then now that I have kids, I look back at that stuff and I'm like, there's no way that I would have done that to my kids. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I didn't, I wasn't the one making that mistake. It was my, it was my adult treating my, you know, me as a kid wrongly. So anyway, I say all that to say that you know, your nervous system stores all that stuff and you can work through all that. Well, cause I had a very demanding job, but I wasn't high on the totem pole. And then I took a promotion and first it was madness. I literally oh, no. helped build a unit that is intense. And it was 24 seven and it was exhausting. And as soon as it got open and the dust settled, I was bored. <laughs> I was so <laughs> bored. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> what did I it do? It was so frustrating. Cause she would, like she would be worried. sitting here trying to create issues that she would have to solve. Yeah. Like yeah. It just, just literally creating problems to yeah. solve them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then this promo the second promotion came up to become the manager of both departments. So not a clinical coordinator, but above that who basically runs it. And I was like, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm very functional. I can do anything. 
So I'm like, I'm going to apply for it. And sure enough, did I get it. And it is madness and it is chaos and it is overwhelming. And I love every minute of it. It is so <laughs> stupid. But then JD's like, man, we've never been happier. We've never made love but it's this like, much. And I'm like, yeah, it, it's great. <laughs> it's also <laughs> like we thought we would be happy with me working from home and all that stuff. And that was the biggest stressor in the world. And, and our marriage. Because I set expectations and on you. I set expectations on me that I didn't up live up to. to. But um, with the adrenaline yeah. thing and and. Um, the company I work for, I work at a steel mill for those that don't know, um, I, I play with lava, but, uh, the company we work for in the cafeteria, they put a big, um, on, on one of the walls in the cafeteria and it's got the names of all the veterans that work there. Hmm, that's cool. And the amount of veterans that work there is insane. And it's gotta be because, um, just we're all addicted to the adrenaline, like, it's the intensity, a, yeah. Yeah, like it is, my sure. dad said, like, it is a, it, like I'll show EMS, you some pictures once we get off the air. EMS like, and fire, dad. What about beat cops? I know, like, we have cops that come into an emergency room, obviously. There are some is who will never not be beat that's our cops. niece. Oh, niece, excuse me. I'm sorry. So it's she, like they're addicted to the rush. No, no. Just, just I keep on talking over you. I apologize. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, we do it all the time, almost 20 years. So I should know better. <laughs> know. Uh, my dad says you need a knucklehead beer. Yeah, we do. That's, deal with five by five. So would it taste to... like stubborn? Uh, <laughs> um, it would probably be an idea. <laughs> if it's like <laughs> if it's like most Peter beers I drank when I was younger, man, this tastes like bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I was crying as you're doing it. <laughs> 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 laughing at first yeah, and then that's crying. Funny. That's awesome. Um, as yeah, long as it's, it's not sure. as long as it's not like whiskey. Actually, we have knucklehead hats um, that you're son-in-law made so there you go. pretty cool um i got a comment on them last week so the the tactical was it the od green the yeah OD green which is funny ones. you were so, you think so? yeah you were like that? my fourth he or said, fifth he says order he thinks the beat is their comfort zone i always assumed it's because that's where the chaos happens so i, I always that. thought that that's why they're just addicted to that no, but that's when they're rush. in their strength zone too i mean they're yeah that's what you've trained for zone. and it's it's the you whatever you you've trained for a lot of cops and firefighters all the positions you've been in i trained for respiratory (laughs) (laughs) all the other ones i have i have i have found along the way no whether you i had see it or not you've always been training for a managerial position because you've always put yourself in that position you do the research outside of work it's true you know it's i volunteer i go to the meetings any meeting and i teach classes so i you're right i always did take to some degree a leadership role not intentionally because there were times i in my career where i was literally like i'm not going to do management ever again <laughs> how many times have i said that i will never every time. be a manager again. <laughs> every time you've gone ever, to a different place i'm ever, never managing I'll never again. D- and for some reason they're always like hey you know we've got this this leadership well because you're a natural leader i want to and i'm like i am not you <laughs> are like you have this way of just you can talk to you you let me, let me click my thought real quick. Oh, Not wow. only can you talk to people, but you can identify the personality types to be able to talk to them a certain way to either elevate them, redirect them, whatever the situation is needing at the time. And that is something I don't have. I have I one mode. I have, thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> hey, fuck stick. And, and that's the mode I work because that's all I've ever known. And and I don't know how to well, approach people the other way, the but you thing, have that. And it's come things, very natural. To I you. think in management, people forget that you're managing adults. Like if you're, but are if we? You're managing adults. Can you just fucking treat them? You've like met adults? the guys I work really with. Appreciate that. Like just <laughs> hey hey yeah, I don't want to say hey fuck stick or whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that in a professional environment. So I'm like hey bra. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But I can't do that. Oh, I want to see you knife hand one of your RTs. Just... Oh. <laughs> the only time that's come out was with my last boss. So with, with you being um, a business owner and you have your own yeah. team that you've built yep. at this point and, and being, um, are you a combat vet or just a veteran? I, I, don't, I don't know. No, um, I was ne- never in combat. I was in, uh, I did get deployed to, to Iraq. We did over a hundred missions, only had a handful of incidents. And we sent a, a handful of people back to uh, Germany for medevac, but no, we never received rounds whenever we were on missions. I, I don't want to. So say, I don't wait. I don't want to set the bar too high for you, but you know, uh, uh, someone on our show, you know, they saved someone famous. So. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
the guy on our show that saved um Mar- uh, oh Marcus yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, tony Mar- brooks yeah, oh, yeah, yeah who was yeah. on the rescue yeah. crew um, for for marcus luttrell yeah yeah that's right no no yeah I, i'm not, not trying to set the bar and compare not. you to other guests nope. <laughs> not so, at all i would be several notches below <laughs> that, that so young man. so it's you going from from a military especially marine which is known as as being like the harder more gritty branch yep and going from the knife handing hey fuck stick to running a team how does i mean oh, how do you do that differences like huge differences so shout out to uh the knucklehead team we're you know we do a bunch of creative uh things and um it's a good question so some of what you were just noticing about what your wife can do that's what you you have to be able to do you have to identify where first of all everybody who comes on board prior to them coming on board we've we've evaluated them we've sent them questionnaires they take a test it's actually called crystal nose uh, it's r- a really cool um it's like a an online questionnaire that diagnoses um differences about people's social profiles and it puts them in different categories like are they decisive are they indecisive are they you know more um do they, things have to go along are they more analytical like what is their personality myers briggs is kind of the way that you would well, categorize that test. so it's pretty cool and what is that and again it's called crystal nose so crystal that sounds knows, like, like a drug you know, crystal website. nose k-n-o-w-s crystal, yep that okay. sounds crystal like, nose. it sounds like crystal sound math like. in your nose that's what it's okay like. so that's how we remember <laughs> it's <laughs> not what it is but that's that's what they call it so it's a really cool useful tool Got it. uh to help us just talk i mean because you can't talk to an audio editor who sits there and just pays attention and listens to inflections and understands the prompts and the change in voice inflection and how things change the same way that you talk to somebody in sales yeah. now there's similarities mm-hmm. but the differences is what the biggest the the biggest difference that you have to be so somebody who can pay attention to detail and then somebody who's you know um a creative like who's responsible for making our youtube shorts or facebook reels or the the uh, the connectivity between the marketing ops and what url ties back to which campaign or which asset all of that attention to detail is what the standard characteristic is, but I don't want somebody who can do that and then just can't hold their tongue <laughs> working in sales. True. So it's like, you, you gotta be able to like have those strengths work for you. So I no, don't, Crystal, I don't not I... knows, knows. <laughs> like Crystal, she knows something. <laughs> Crystal knows <laughs> something I know type deal. <laughs> Crystal knows, you know, it's all bleedy and yeah. Yeah, not that type. And they so, said, thank good you question. for your service. Heck yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people that I served with, it was some of my best time uh, alive. I was just working with some really cool people. And it's in the network that, uh, that's come as a result of it. Um, I never thought, I, I didn't join just so you could get to know people after the fact. But it's amazing, the commonality. Like, JD, I was giving them a hard time for being in a different service before we started. <laughs> and I got the service wrong. But yet, you know, he, you know, he was does. able to make fun of me for being a Marine and I call it just being a knuckle dragger because that's what I am. Have you had so. the crowns ready to eat yet? Oh yeah, those are great. They're fucking delicious. Yeah, we we, we were supposed we to we were supposed to sample them live on the show. Yeah, and our know. kids ate them all before yeah, we could. We, our family. We had them. like six packages, and the kids ate them all. I'm like, well, I guess I we mean, good. the packaging fucking is great too. Yeah. MREs and. Like they look like MRE. It's really cool. It looks the, did the packaging job. looks like MREs, but they so, they're legit crown yeah. crayons. Our kids were drawn with them yeah. and eating them. Casey is Casey's Casey, Casey, Casey. So Casey's dad and I, Max, right? No, not Max. Uh, uh, I was thinking Max Franks. For Isaac, me. I Isaac saw is, it. Yeah. So dad, Casey's yeah. dad, Isaac, um, is married to her oldest sister. Okay. Um, long, long, long before I ever met this one here. Um. Isaac and I were in MEPS together. Oh, wow. Isaac and I went to basic training together. Oh, wow. Uh, we were side by side bunks. Oh, he was also one of my and, sister's at 18 roommates. <laughs> and then, yeah, I lived with one of her other sisters. And I was friends at one point and, and never with met her. Brother. I had no I was, clue she I was existed. With his brother, I met and my his best brother. friend, the lead singer of the band I was in for years. I think the, was her friend. The first time I met JD's brother, I was in my. I don't know. I met him at Tynan Hall. We danced once. He reminded me later, but I was probably 16 at the time. So I had known his brother since I was 16 years old. So by the time I was 18 and bartending, we were very close friends. And he kept saying like, everyone kept telling me, oh, you've got it. You got to meet my friend. Oh, you'll kick it off. And I was like, "Uh uh-uh, I don't want a relationship. I was pre-med. I was so focused. I was like, no. 
And, and then I you mean, walked into her life. Yeah. And the day I got home, her yeah. knucklehead yeah. decision was meat no, yeah. yeah. The day I moved home from. Uh, hey, Dad, that was one of those two or three decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the day I moved home from the service, uh, met her. Yeah. Wow. And we've been together ever since. We were, we were hooked up. We were supposed to be a one night really? stand. Yeah, Dan, Karen. <laughs> First time I met her, first time I met her parents, I had an eight-inch mohawk and metal sticking all out of my face because I used to have all kinds of piercings and yeah, yeah. I, I was Sound, spoke retarded. Like a true airman. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking no. hard. But, his no, nipples teasing. were pierced. His tongue was pierced. I had his eyebrows, septum, I had other big old fucking pierced. holes here that took forever to close back up. Wow, like completely different person than I am today. You're talking like, about the changes idiot. from going. Yeah. Or running a business. There's more similarities there than what you're talking about, what you do. No kidding. So you've gone through all the change, my no friend. Kidding. So good for you. Now your dad, you know, kicking ass and taking names, doing doing some big things. It's cool. Yeah. I'll I'll know how good of a dad I, I am <laughs> by how much money I spend on therapy in about 15 to 20 years. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I don't think anybody we knows if they're a good parent until, until it's over. Yeah. Not even it's over. We've Your had... dad is still like interacting with us here. So yeah. He, never <laughs> he, has, so, he has a know. tab. To, we'll say something. We'll, we'll make a blush. Um, so there's times where we've had moments with our kids where our 15 year old's like, oh my God. And I was like, that. That's gonna be worth therapy. For. Like, <laughs> I, it's worth the money. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay in your therapy later. That was worth it. Because, and he's like, I don't like this. <laughs> and your oldest is what? 12? 12. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve and a nine year old. Um, they're awesome. Man, you're so, the next have, couple what, years 15, are gonna 13, change you so much. Ooh, I don't doubt it, man. I'm already starting to see the little oh, preteen. All those preteen. Do you have too. boys or girls? Both boys. <laughs> and both boys. So uh, you'll be fine. Say you know, say a prayer for my wife. So. I'm just waiting for the day for both of them to to do the quintessential call the old man out. Oh no. <sighs> we really? got you know what I, I gotta that, say that we're, we've been pretty lucky so far. You know, so like far. the teen attitude. Well, the, the trick is to just mouthy. beat the ever living shit out of your kids for the first four years of their lives. That way they fear you forever. And yeah. who and who beat the shit out of them? <laughs> that's that's who worth did? the therapy right there, right? That's, that's worth the therapy. JD was on the rigs. It was mom who was outnumbered who beat the shit out of her. <laughs> I was like, nope, because I knew I was outnumbered, so I knew I couldn't put up with I don't shit. Think, I think our generation is probably the last generation that has that calling out the old man mentality. I don't think it's... You think I so? think it's probably... Dad, dad. The cat is fucking with the... No, hey, go. Maisie, no. Did, dad, did you call out? Did you call out Papa? Did you I ever like go to blows with him? Yeah. Because I'm just curious: is this like a tyranny Irish thing, or is this like a men in general thing? So I'm just curious for myself. That's I just so want to know. Cat. Almost getting the kid. I took every episode. That cat beautiful. likes to uh, like involve me. Hey, no. me. that cat. Every he fucking says, episode. Neither one has- of you have been beaten <laughs> no i got my it ass was, i got my ass it was whooped, physical redirection but i know now that i deserved every second of it that's not the point <laughs> but yeah did you call out papa did y'all ever go to blows no uh, but my brother almost did Ooh, i did once gary Ooh. i did and, and my dad boxed for the navy and it wasn't fucking smart <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that yeah. goes back to like yeah. i'm willing to fight anybody I may not win but yeah. yeah, I swung and woke up. Okay, that wait, was wait. that was my two wait, steps. I have a more oh, nice. question. Dad, do you think Papa would have whooped Uncle Gary's ass? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty sure your 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 grandpa could have fucked oh, up Gary. Yeah, I think so too. At, at an, when I met him, at the age that I met him, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but. he you know I he was so kind to me, but I can see that angst in him. He's got it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that I'm angst. I'm pretty in sure he had yeah, a wicked man. streak with a baseball bat. Come on, what? <laughs> Sounds like you're dead. Oh, we're going to have to family. listen to this story no. when we see you in a couple of days. Oh, we're yeah. getting this story in New Mexico, which uh, I'm not supposed to say we're going to. At tomorrow. some point. At some, yeah, at some tomorrow that could happen. So, <laughs> um, again, OPSEC. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, I don't know what knapsack I mean, is. Not knapsack. <laughs> Did I say knapsack? Uh, yeah, I mean, OPSEC. OPSEC. Op- operational security. Yeah. You don't let people I'm know I'm not what's going on a mission, sir. I'm going to fucking New Mexico tomorrow. That's what I'm doing. All right. <sighs> we'll, Good. we'll never know when this publishes. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the people that watch them. Well, um, by the time this publishes on, yeah. on the other platforms, exactly. we'll already be back. Exactly, you'll yeah. be fine. That's right. Yeah. You think the two you'll people watching back. are going to come rob me? Is that what you're thinking? What's <laughs> weird is that number that's on the screen is never fucking right. It so I'll go look. Never. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. never right. It's 
the real time um, analytics on Meta uh, or you know this platform. Uh, and that's coming yeah. from our our media Meta expert, right. and he's saying this is horse shit. Yeah, so there right. goes my jokes. Well, what's funny is there's times when we'll have we'll have comments from like. 12 people showing up at the same time and, and and it shows that we have like two people watching it's like how is that possible and y'all are hearing it right here people my yeah. my grandpa and uncle's Garbage. drama right here <laughs> <laughs> so that's why y'all tune in I, I don't want my so i understand what you're saying it, you know we don't have to uh, keep on going on this particular topic but i, I don't hope my boys don't ever because i don't want to neutralize them if you know what i mean yeah i yeah. don't want to have to like get to a point where my kids come at me because they Feel like they got to prove themselves i want them to do it to one of their buddies or you know see we that type of thing we like, taught I, I our kids to for... be intellectual so yeah there you go they are quick yeah so i'm very quick oh they're witty like, like they'll i'm, I'm oh, quick witty to the point where jd gets frustrated and walks away because he is not as quick as i am and he gets angry our boys are just as quick as me but like, they've fast. also they also go to or they used to go to Muay Thai and BJJ with me oh, too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. But I've also told them, like, you, you know, you never start, you start a fight. I want to beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Um, if somebody starts one with you and, and you, you finish, finish it, it yeah. cool. I'm taking you for ice cream. Yeah. 100%. Um, you see somebody getting bullying and you go fucked up the bully. I'm taking you to steak. Yeah. You know, 100%. I don't give a shit what the school if says. If I hear that yeah. someone was bullied in front of you and you didn't do shit, we're going to have yeah, a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's not about, you it's not about me it's about like is that right or wrong man like if you know that they didn't deserve that if they deserved it say the fuck out of it man let them handle it between themselves like men or like children or whatever sure but if someone is unwarrantedly being abused assaulted bullied whatever you want to call it and you stand to the side you're just culpable there you go so i mean that's like watching someone being sexually assaulted not doing shit really wow that's fucked up you yeah. know what i mean it's like to me it's like yeah don't pull out your phone and press record because that's the problem that's the problem that's there's a, big, a very yes. big problem in society where people oh are like God. this yeah instead of actually doing something about it yeah the in the uh the being able to be incentivized for recording and be an observer as opposed to doing something about it yeah that's uh that is a problem for sure it's yeah. one of those the, the the flip side of the coin to technology yeah. yeah like technology is amazing the things we can do yeah and what do we yeah. decide to do watch porn record people <laughs> with stupid <laughs> shit sometimes both at the same time <laughs> <laughs> or netflix you know or netflix. and for that reason you're playing yeah. us out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i will play us out here so with uh with that being said we are going to call it a night yeah. steven thank you very much for uh taking the time we, to come out have, here like three more shows um, with you. This, yeah this Awesome. This was, was it's so great having somebody in person right? and not on a screen no. in a little box. With the delay everything. Everything. and their phone is cutting it's, out. What are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, I love the organic uh, uh, way it goes. It, it's just so much better. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for coming Absolutely, by. I'm man. sure uh, you and the guys are gonna have fun and editing enjoy this one. Listening uh, to this playback as you edit <laughs> it and everything. Yeah, so that's gonna just go, gonna be oh, fun. God, are you yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh, as always if you are out drinking or you plan to go out drinking please Thank find you. your uh, sober ride home stay where you're at call an uber do what you got to do we want to see you uh here same beer time same beer channel every week except for next week um we're not going to be airing anything uh next wednesday but following wednesday we are going to be having uh nicholas ron back on it'll be his third time on um he's going to be talking about uh his adventure where he tried rowing across the atlantic and and, uh, and yep. yeah and this dude if you haven't when i was 11 years old he does everything that i want to do like he raises wolves <laughs> he races cars wow. he traveled the country on a, a jiu-jitsu tour um he climbs mountains he has 16 nonprofits over, at this you know, point yeah. uh yeah, yeah it was him and three other guys tried rowing the uh rowing the atlantic the amount of stuff that Nick has done is amazing. So we're going to be here, but he's also, uh, he's, he's a suicide attempt survivor. He pulled the trigger and went click. And since that day, he's done nothing but try to make his life the best that it can, but also make it the best for other people as he yeah. can. He's got 16 nonprofits that he runs. Uh, most of them for veterans, combat veterans, PTSD, uh, suicide survivors, uh, Ridiculously things like that. Uplifting. Like he, he is by far the guy that I want to be like, he, just talking to the guy makes me a better person. So make sure uh, two weeks from now that you tune into that. It'll be August 9th. 
Uh, besides that, we'll see you uh, next time. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Love you. See you in a couple weeks. Appreciate it, Joe. Uh, I'm pushing the wrong button. Spare with me. <laughs> Bye.